So here I got the five minute candle five day chart for ASTC Astro Tech Corp Company. So pretty much last week's price action because it was real volatile and they did one of the most cold blooded suspect and I'd say criminal offerings I've seen in a long time in the penny world. So I want to go over it. So it had previously been trading in around two ten to two dollars and twenty cent range on a slight low uptrend. And then they dropped this PR in the morning of Wednesday, April seventh at five AM. So Astrotech subsidiary and Cl Cleveland Clinic signed agreement for the breath analysis study to develop a rapid COVID nineteen breath test. So a pre market COVID press release sends it from two dollars to briefly around three on high volume and then it proceeds to fade the entire day to even lower than it was the day before and so I've actually played it this day and I remember it really real carefully because of it and let's look back on the daily candle just to show you how much volume this this one PR brought in so previous in the last hundred days you know like the high of highest volume was around 13 14 million shares traded so it traded 60 60 million shares traded so four times the previous high vo most high volume day in the last hundred days so a lot of people bought let's go back to that chart and the app the VWAP was over 250 and I remember that because I got in around 219 and 222 on two accounts. And I figured, wow, I'm in a, you know, 15% lower than the average share traded on this 60 million millions of shares traded. And when we look back, let's go back to the 10 to get a better feel from the get-go. This is their last 10 Q from December 31st. They had 19.7 million shares. So on a day like that, that's like three times the the complete outstanding share count traded over, rotated. So you think, oh wow, you're getting a dip at 220, you know, it closed that day at 218. But here's a, here's a drop here, and let's go over what they do. They announced an offering at $1.50 per share, 6.6 .6 million shares. 6.6666 a lot of sixes so think about this this previously of this news it was 210 220 range it was closing in for the two days before that they suck in all this volume with that PR and then they do an offering at 150 30 cents lower than where it closed at the day before the news or the day of the news I mean completely vicious but it gets worse so they do that offering. I actually managed to get out on the bounce. I was surprised that it bounced from a 150 offering to 190. I got around like out at like 189, 190, 192. And then I bought back in on this dump and then it sold again. But uh, luckily I did because uh, I escaped narrowly. They do the most cold-blooded uh, technique in the 42B world. They do a increase of the offering after the after hours closing so say you bought the dip or you decided to hold because you figured there's only 6.6 .6 million shares which would only been like a th you know a third of what they already have outstanding but instead they say due to demand they increase the size of the public offering to 21.6 million they pretty much double their outstanding share count after after hours closing I mean completely just sinking in the bags everywhere for people so the next day here we are opens up gaps down under 160 it can't break 160 but for some reason there's bids all up in the 154 153 range all day this was Thursday I think here comes Friday Friday the last day of the week we're in the 146 147 148 pretty uneventful day I did pick up shares 147, 148, and then sold them because I decided I'm not going to swing this even for one or two days, especially over the weekend. 
I'll be just day trade this looking for the bounce from here and I'll, I'll go over some of the support and resistance from a technical standpoint I got them on the three day thought I did Let's see well I remember let's just go over them on here first one's gonna be uh, once 150 obviously the price of the offering is gonna be a key point of resistance but then over that it's gonna be this 160 was difficult to get over next it's gonna be 175 so 150 160 175 then it's gonna be at 190 then two dollar psychological point even though it's not that much on the chart and then it's gonna go up to 215 so I repeat 150 160 175 190 two dollars and 215 those are gonna be my resistance levels and price points I mean price targets on the way up so each one of those points I'd set a, a you know a stop loss or if it once it goes over and protect my profits from there if, if I'm looking for more upside but or I'll look to trade in between those ranges because support becomes resistance once it's broken and if it holds so those are all good points to remember but on the downside let's look at the um so this is interesting when you look at the 100 day chart I mean the one year candles the daily candles one year chart you see why we held here this was the previous 52 week low support level around 145 146 147 so once we break underneath that I have to go actually to the two year chart to see that I would say the next levels would be like 130 here and then I'd say 110 and 120 so, so I mean if it breaks this I'd say if it breaks 145 it's gonna test 130 if it breaks 130 it's gonna test 120 if it breaks 120 it's gonna taste 110 and if it breaks that then it's gonna test a dollar I don't know if it's gonna go down that low I think most likely we'll see a bounce because I mean this traps every pretty much every bull that bought last week this was vicious price action and I'm gonna go over some of more the interesting stuff I found about this company because there's a lot of red flags so there's not much upside see I got lucky on this I got on that bounce I got back in I got that one bounce but I mean you had to really be lucky on that timing you could have caught this one and this one but you had been right on it but anyone that bought to up here on that pre-market or try to catch any bounces on that day nope you, hell you, unless you took a couple cents here from here offering catches you anyone buys that the next day that doesn't sell immediately think it's gonna bounce back down here and then you think anyone that loads that day down day again so what's also interesting is let's look at some of the price action I mean, this was some crazy. Even before they announced the offering, this was what was going on. So this is why it's real sus suspect to me because it feels as though that someone knew. Even though a lot of the small caps are feel like, are getting naked shorted right now, it seems like. Look at the price action on this. This was Friday. Look at the uh, tape. All red. Just a hundred shares. 100 shares I'm gonna fast forward so we can look so you guys get the point but I mean just getting walked down relentlessly so many shares the short doesn't even make sense and this was, was how it was all the way from that Wednesday of that initial news before the offering so another thing is sometimes Companies can go short say someone goes short at three dollars and then they use the offering at 150 for guaranteed cover that low To double their money. I wonder if that's what's going on So let's go over some of the more of the fundamentals so that we already looked through the offerings. Let's see their 10 Q. They had 19.7 million shares as of December 31st They had they say 22 million dollars in cash. So it's interesting. They're doing an offering so soon But here's where it's suspect more suspect red flag activity to in 2020 for the three months ended December 11th I mean December 31st 
hit $130,000 in revenue. In the previous year, for the same time frame, it's only two hundred and five grand in revenue. And when you look at the six months ended in December thirty on December thirty first, two thousand twenty, it's only two hundred and seventy. So they're not even making half a million dollars in revenue. And and look how much they're losing. Three months ended in December thirty first in twenty twenty was one point six million. So when I dug a little deeper and I look into the offerings. So they did an offering on on the twenty first October twenty first of twenty twenty. Then they went and they did another offering on October twenty eighth. Seven days later, they diluted their share count from November 9th to March twenty fifth at the market around eight hundred thousand shares. And then they did another offering on December eighteenth, just about what two weeks before this ten Q was filed for another three point five million shares at the market. And here they are doing this cold-blooded offering in March behind that hyped-up press release with the COVID name, you know, like a lot of these small caps are doing. So then I wanted, then I looked into the CEO and a guy in, one of my, in my Discord posted some int interesting information. It's, look at his dad. So his dad is actually a... Pickens chaired the hedge fund BP Capital Management. He was a well-known takeover operator and corporate raider during the 1980s and had a net worth of $500 million. I think he died a billionaire. So he's a son of an extremely rich guy. He knows how to work a company. He grew up in this industry. Why? But he has no success in this company it's from 2011. Is losing all this money, but more importantly, we gotta find the personal life. So it says, in uh, he married Lynn O'Brien. They had four children together: Deborah Pickens, Michael O. Pickens, Thomas Pickens III, Pam Pickens, the second. So Thomas B. Pickens the third is the CEO of ASTC. Michael O. Pickens is his biological brother, both dad and mother. Check this out. T. P. T. Boone's Pickens son gets probation in fraud case. A son of legendary oil t investor T. Boone Pickens was sentenced to five years of probation on Monday in order to take part in the sentence of substance abuse program for orchestrating a fraud scheme that involved distributing fictitious stock tips to investors. So pretty much he was pumping, dumping, what does it say over here? Thinly traded companies. So his biological brother has already been in cop pumping, dumping, thinly traded companies. And here they are doing, and here's his brother company. Very suspect price action. And when you look at all those offerings they did last year, they also took a PPE. So from my understanding, this might be a completely fraudulent company, and this guy's just milking it. He knows how to, under, to uh, run one of these small cap companies and just milk it. With no real aspirations of making it. He's actually got a site called Tom Pickens the third dot com. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. But I mean that's not that big of a deal, I guess. But when we look into their history, they've had one split October 16, 2017, one for five, reverse split. And if you initially put ten thousand dollars in it in two thousand eleven when this started. Ten years ago, you would now have twenty eight hundred. So you lost. You have a fourth of your money. So it's interesting. It's an interesting case. It's an interesting situation. They have no, pretty much. They've never proven any revenue. And when you also look this guy up on YouTube, he's on here talking about NASA and space stuff, astro tech. And here they are in a completely different industry, just chasing, I think, the hot thing like a lot of these small micro cap companies do. So definitely want to hold this long term or, or expect anything big. But price action, I am looking for a bounce, looking for a little revenge. They got me for the 15%. I'm going to get it back on the way up whenever it does bounce. But until then, I wouldn't want to put too much into this or hold it long term thinking this is an investment. This sketchy type of uh, price action, but look at that gap. There's going to be a gap once it goes. 
once we get back up, I'd say back over 165, it's going to be a nice, it's going to be a soft spot to, to the 180, 190-ish area. So, on watch next week. Don't hold to overnight in the long-term future. Right after this immediate offering they just did, we'll, we'll be safe. I'd say a week or two, but the way they're doing offerings, I want to be swinging this or holding this long term much longer than I dropped this video. With the profitable pig picks, you'll be getting access to the Discord and real time SMS alerts that detail the particular ticker, a clear buying range, defined risk, and two price targets with the good risk to reward ratio and a brief explanation of what type of play it is. On the Discord, I'll be going over real time, play by play, the situation as it changes. As we all know, trading is dynamic.